Joined from the NFL Combine, NFL Network's Colleen Wolf, and you can tell that the activity has picked up here <laughs> at the convention center. <laughs> so to put things in perspective, we are right across from the bench press. Matt Taylor was really tempted to go over there and see what he could do, but we're right in here. Nobody, Colleen, wants, nobody wants to see that. <laughs> Not still anymore. Got some in Not here, anymore. Let's go. So, friend of the podcast, oh, Colleen yeah. Wolf. Great to have you. This is awesome. It's. Uh, I didn't think that we would be sitting next to a bunch of guys bench pressing with like a crowd cheering yeah. um, while doing the podcast. So this is an experience that is really. Uh, it's interesting. We're bringing the <laughs> listeners in the midst it's of it all. Yes, uh -huh. absolutely. This is the combo. Absolutely. Let's go. Being back after, you know, a nearly two-year hiatus, you know, it was 2020 the last time that we were all here doing this. What's been the most beneficial part, the most exciting part for you guys getting back here, doing live shows uh, from Lucas Oil Stadium, from the convention center? You guys have been all over the place. I think there are, like, five different NFL Network sets yeah. set up across I, the building. If I was a cat right now, I would just be, like, kneading and purring because <laughs> this is, like, so – it's like catnip. Just to be able to be back together, having done so many pandemic style shows, mm -hmm. I can't even sit on a Zoom like anymore, one more time. It was so difficult last year to do, and the last two years, to do so much of like what is important about this job, connecting with people, talking to them face to face. It's a totally different experience. And so much about the Combine is what happens behind the scenes and what happens in the conversations that you end up having with coaches and GMs and scouts and agents. And that's not the stuff that we can put on TV, so we have this as like the backdrop, but it, it's just so nice to be able to do this again. And I have such a soft spot for Indianapolis. It, I didn't realize how much I missed the Combine mm -hmm. and Indy until I came back and I was like, oh my God, that's right. We're all going to go to dinner at Elmo's. This was We're the last thing prime. before the pandemic, really. Yes. Maybe if, you, if you think about it, it was two weeks before the whole shutdown. We had no idea. Right. Well, and I was like, you know, back then I was probably stressing out about like I had too many dinners to go to. And I'm like, I wish. Like there were <laughs> poor parts of 2020 where I was like, if I could just have one of those days back. But it has been so nice to be back with like all of the media as well because it's like an NFL convention yeah, that's and exactly right. it, it is such a spectacle too and it's just it's so much fun the hours are really long <laughs> but it is it's a it's just a great time but you have been in Indy prior to this because we saw you at training camp yep we were up in Westfield you and I got to hang out there after practice you had to sit down with coach Reich then you were here for the Thursday night game mm -hmm. against the Jets and now here in March for the Combine. When you were there in Westfield at Grand Park, talking to Carson Wentz, talking to Coach Reich, and then you come in during the season, to you, how everything transpired? How surprised were you with the end of this season? What do you ultimately think happens moving forward with the future of Carson Wentz, with the future of the Indianapolis Colts at quarterback, given that you watched this all unfold pretty yeah. much firsthand? Lara. This was the most shocking turn of events of the entire season because I came in with some questions about Carson Wentz having watched him in Philadelphia, but I knew that the reunion with Frank Reich would help and that Frank Reich, he stuck his neck out for him, he even said so last week in the, or a couple days ago in the pressure, or presser, what is time anymore? I don't even know. <laughs> um, but I thought that that was going to really make a difference for Carson and knowing that the skill position players are all there and this is such a quarterback friendly offense with Jonathan Taylor and so to watch first he was injured and then there was questions in training camp about okay well who's going to start the season they start one and four and then they win eight of their next ten and so it's a little bit of an emotional roller coaster but then they were rolling and this was a team that had the defense, it had the running game, nobody wanted to face them in the playoffs, and then they didn't get there. And that was such a disappointment. It was such a devastating end. And all they had to do was win one of their last two games. Yeah. And the way that they fell apart was just so sad to watch. And I did kind of feel like I've seen this Carson Wentz before. And even in that game that the Colts played against the Patriots, mm -hmm. it was like at the end of that game, they had to take the ball out of Carson's hands. And they were just like, you know what, we're just going to give it to we Jonathan get, Taylor. Yeah, first down. That's it. Right. And, and it worked. And it was like, okay, this is going to be a problem if, if 
Carson Wentz needs to win this game yeah, for us. he threw for 50 yards in that game, 150 yards right, in that game. Right, right. Uh, so I I wasn't surprised that Carson Wentz ended up, that, that happening with Carson Wentz, but I was surprised that the Colts kind of ended the season in such spectacularly bad fashion. Colleen, are they are they close? I mean, is it is it just about the quarterback, or how else do you see the Colts in terms of positions of need to compete with the hierarchy of the AFC that we saw in the playoffs? I, I think that this is such a good roster, and it is such a shame that they don't have draft capital on on top of the Wentz thing because of Wentz. And my whole thing is though, this is not a great quarterback class, and you don't really have a ton of options in free agency, so. What are, you, what are you going to do? You, you don't really have options, and they might have to just run it back and, and kind of take that L and see if they can get any farther with Wentz this year. But I know that that, se- that, that sounds like it's not going to happen from, from inside the building, that they're going to end up moving forward. And I'm just not sure if that means they're going to have to take two steps back before they take another step forward. Without the first round pick, you're looking at guys who might be available where the Colts are selecting in the second round. And the second round has been something where the Colts have scored in the second round with guys like Michael Pittman Jr., Mm -hmm. Jonathan Taylor. That's where you got Darius Leonard, Braden Smith. With the needs that the Colts have outside of the quarterback situation and the position groups that have some depth, where do you see the Colts potentially targeting and maybe being able to get some first-round type talent or at least immediate impact type of guys within this draft class from what you've been able to see so far? I would love to see them get another wide receiver. That They absolutely need help for Michael Pittman. I mean, this is they need to be able to free him up, and they just need other options, I think, in the passing game too. And maybe that will help out the quarterback situation. But they are the, – the running game that they have, Jonathan Taylor, like at, at points last year, I thought that he was in the MVP conversation. And – that just speaks volumes because like it's so difficult for anyone other than a quarterback to win it but when i look at the positions that they have like they could absolutely use another pass catcher so whether i know the tight end class is really deep as well and i know that um what mo alley cox he's a free agent coming up um so they have they have some areas that they could address pass catching wise, but I think a receiver would be good. Colleen, Hol- Colleen Wolf hosts the Split Ends podcast. You can follow her on Twitter at Colleen Wolf. That is Wolf with an E at that's the right, end. That's right. That's right. That's right. And you get to spend some time in Indy even prior to. Mr. Wolf was here. Mr. Wolf was As here. As in my dad. Yes. Like <laughs> <laughs> I kept my maiden name. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, Indy hosts fantastic sporting events year-round. We have simultaneous to the Combine. You have the Big Ten Women's Basketball Tournament. Next time is the Big Ten Men's Tournament coming up next week at the Fieldhouse. And we are not so far off from the month of May. And you, my friend, got Mm -hmm. a preview of the month of May. Did you catch the bug? Oh, my God. I think I have to come for the race. (laughs) I, I, we can make this happen. Okay, so I was not plugged in on any of this. I was like, I'm going to go to the racetrack. And now I'm like, oh, it's IMS. Guys. The racetrack. Like, Come, <laughs> Come on now. Oh, I know. The racetrack. Um, and now I went through the museum at the, the Speedway. Oh, mm-hmm. I caught the Speedway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's IMS. The local. I don't know. Now you're local. There's All a right, whole yeah, town no, named after it. I, it's crazy. Yeah. It's so, it was so cool. So my dad and I, I, I wasn't sure what to expect. And I honestly did not think I was going to love it as much as I did. The museum is so cool. All of the cars, like the old indie cars mm-hmm. from 1911, that kind of look like a, like train cars, and some of them look like a little yes. bit like airplanes, yes. a little bit. And they used to have <laughs> two people the all in the car. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And so that whole part of it was really cool. And then I was looking at the helmets that they had. There was like this old fabric helmet. I'm like, why would you even put this on? What is this doing? <laughs> it's like putting a shirt on your head. Like, I don't think that's going to protect anything. Um, and then we went all around the, the whole place and we saw like the different suites, the suite that they built for Matt Damon and Christian yeah. Bale when they were. Mm-hmm. filming Ford versus Ferrari like that was really cool we went out we kissed the bricks of course yes we of had course. to do it it was really, now, really is your, cool is your dad a gearhead does he like racing he likes cars okay but he was never into racing either um but now he's like oh my gosh maybe me and your mom will come down and then you can come yeah. out and then we'll all hang out together at the race listen so many people think it's just 33 cars turning left for three hours yeah and like it, it's hard to combat that when you're just on the outside looking in. But if you've never been to an Indianapolis 500, 
it's a it's an absolute bucket list thing. Like the first 25 laps of an Indy 500, all of the pomp and circumstance that hour prior to the green flag waving, it's unlike anything in sports. It right. really is. And I didn't know that there there's like concerts, there's a snake pit. Carb day. There. Carb, carb day, day on Friday. Carb day sounds yeah. so fun. Carb and day. I love carbs. So and it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> like, this all works out. I usually bring we my dad. We are the same. I, we are the same. <laughs> I usually bring my dad uh, to, he loves carb day. So that's usually <laughs> the day where, where we get going, we get to go see everything. And one of the highlights for me, I always love the pit, uh, pit challenge, mm -hmm. like the pit crew challenge. Absolutely. Ooh. Yeah, it's great because if you don't have the attention span for the entire race, which I do not have, uh -huh. pit crew challenge. It's like Here, 17 seconds. It's, here's the it's thing, fantastic. Colleen, and Lara knows this. Like anything goes in the month of May, especially either on race day or carb day. It's like things that you think would be a big deal just aren't. Like, oh, who's that girl bonging a beer on top of a, of a van? Oh, that's, <laughs> that's just me. that's just Jill from accounting. <laughs> Jill that's from just <laughs> Jill from accounting. Oh, you know what? She had a hard year. You know, she had a tough time balancing the book. Let she deserves it. Like yeah. things that they're just anything goes like nothing matters it's I, great I, I, I'm, I'm gonna do it you absolutely have yeah. to come it's it's gonna happen and we're all gonna do uh, a beer bong together it's just a cheers. it's just Next a giant to party cheers it's to it's that. our beach right just meet you at the beach or in yes. this case we'll meet you at the speedway oh i love it it's fantastic well thank you so much colleen for coming on joining us i know that you are so busy running around all over the place hosting all of the shows what do you have next what's going on the rest of your day i am doing interviews for the next two hours and then i'm heading over well, I guess we're already, I don't even know, honestly. I'm gonna, <laughs> Where am I? I have a Twitter spaces with AJ Dillon and MJD. Nice. I'm going to do, I'm talking a little to Lance Zerline about some of the prospects coming up today. So we'll be doing all sorts of stuff. Our coverage starts at 4 p.m. Eastern on NFL Network. And we got gotcha you all week long. <laughs> all right. And all the time, quite frankly. All the time, yeah. always. Colleen, thank you so much. Lara, Matt, thank you guys.